Welcome back everyone to the Thousand Week Reich mod. I'm your host, British Mocha Lover. And right now, we are moving through Iraq. The way into Persia is through Iraq. While our forces are moving through their territory may not be, be taken too kindly. They're too weak to stop us. What do you mean? Sovereignty. Cool. So I didn't even ask him for this, but they gave it to us anyways. I was going to prepare, prepare a naval invasion, but... I think I still might do the naval invasion as well, just because we can. It's cool. Uh, let's see. We have some tankerinos here. Uh, well, I mean, I guess technically... Uh, well... I guess technically, yeah, we can get military cancel or military access. Um, maybe we'll do this. Maybe, maybe not. I'm putting our ships over here. We gotta have a couple comms to go through as well. And I'm moving definitely our ships around here just so that we can invade Iran, which we went to to war last time. Uh, let's see. And then there's a couple comments. First of all, uh, screw it. At this point, I'm just gonna do this as well. I'm not gonna even be bothered with this. Let's use this eight transfer tool mod for this. And the second Russian. Group, boom, boom, there you go. We're not going to deal with that anymore. Cool. We'll leave that open there for now. Uh, you guys overall, like, recommended that we just annex all the colonies that broke free. So I already annexed, like, Tanganyika, uh, Freetown, was it? Oh, no, Sierra, Sierra Leonese State. I've also annexed, there was someone else here, too, I thought. Someone else. Oh, Nigeria. I forgot, Nigeria. Nigeria has a lot of population, so. It is what it is. They're not cores, but... Hopefully things don't go too badly for us. You know, you never know. Local autonomy is the way to go, though, so... Hopefully we get enough compliance for that. But I just really want to just naval invade at this point. Can we do well in naval invade? Perhaps, yes, no, maybe so. Let's go! Let's go to Iran. Iran is a fun place to be. Just ask all the people who want to move there. Let's see. Karman, Harman, Isthafas, Isfahan, Tehran. Thank you. Cool. And that everyone who needs to do stuff just go crazy here. As we're moving tanks over here too. So, I don't see a lot of enemy divisions though. They've up to two to four, so not bad. We found one. Invisible ink. Containment of Syria. Syria, under its fascist and Nazi-backed regime, is far by far a largest threat to the Middle East, especially to our own interests. We should make sure to build up relations to countries around them to build and to contain this menace. Fascism must be contained. In addition, we must guarantee Israel-Palestine. Although we have we have used to have it under a mandate, the Confederation of Israel-Palestine emerged in the wake of our exit from the region in the early 40s. Its existence is threatened by the Syrian national state. As such, a guarantee of their independence on our part would be cool, or would help cool Syrian belligerents, which is not a bad idea, but... Alright, how many boys are we going to send to die for Israel? Hmm. Tibetans will be next. After that, let's see, yeah... Like you guys said, the Empire Maintenance Bug, just, you know, the sun never sets. It's it's just currently bugged right now, so it is it is what it is. It's cool. But happy 1959, everyone. Hope you're having a great, great year. We aren't quite winning over here, but you know what? That's okay. Sometimes we don't always have to win. Just most of the time. Because if we're not winning, we're not feeling good, right? Cool. So you, so, so a lot of you guys actually recommended that we use console commands to annex the colonies, which I did. Let's see. Some people recommend that we keep the borders as is because we don't like Central Europe, apparently. Or someone said that. Uh, we should give this, uh, the, you know, Niederschlesien to Poland, but that would make borders look even worse. So, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. I'm not going to be bothered with this, just so, just, I won't look at your, uh, you know, Central Europe too much, I guess. So, it is what it is. I'm not going to mess with it anymore. I don't, I'm not really interested in that part of the, the world anymore, just because, well, they're done and toasted. All right, do we ha what do we have over here? Heavy SPAA, no. Armor, maybe? Yeah. Definitely go with the armor stuff, so that'd be pretty good. Guarantee. Oh, the Confederal Districts. Cool. We're going to die for Israel now. So, uh, let's see. I did ask you guys yesterday whether we should recognize the Republic's claims or keep India divided, which we'll go to a little bit. But let's fortify Cyprus first. We still maintain direct rule over the Mediterranean island of Cyprus, but here's and there's sent us reports about their lack of supplies and soldiers. Given how the island's location is of supreme strategic value, it is in our interest to bolster our presence there. And good thank you, Iran. The sun shall never set, so thank you for all the states. Thank you. And actually, since we have you all, we we'll must help put down resistance, right? Uh, do something like that. There you go. And you guys come to Nigeria? Yes. And then you all help us put down that area, and then help us put down Tanjanika. Cool. And let's, let's, let's let that go on. Victory over Iran. We've taken and secured all of the, Persia through a military intervention, and Mohammad Razi... Uh, Reza Pahlavi have been, has been overthrown and forced into exile. Now comes the question of what to do with the country we now control. The first option is to simply install a local government that will be under our watch. So history has shown that the Pahlavi dynasty cannot be trusted to rule Persia and not drift towards our enemies. And so a restoration of the old Qajar dynasty is on the table. The current head of the household of Qajar, Feridun Mirza 
Kajar could be installed to Persian who shot under tight leash from London and Washington. The second option is similar, with Feradun Mirza being installed as ruler, but we could also occupy the Khuzestan region of Persia, ostensibly to protect the Arab population in Khuzestan. The region holds Iran's largest oil reserves, and a direct occupation of this region could provide us direct control over these resources as well as another base in the region. Finally, we can put these problems away for later, and occupy Persia directly for now, though this would certainly be met with hostility and cause greater strain and instability in our nation. Uh, with this stability, we can control an owner of all this stuff, install and control, uh, install Freydun Mirage. I mean, technically, I, I want to just install these guys, just make them under public government, but we've seen that with the decolonization process, if you give them a little inch, they'll take a mile, so I, we'll just occupy all of Persia, just because we can. Just because we can. And, other, us, and of course, we're led by Hugh Gate Scale, which is pretty nice. Um, Balkans? Y'all doing okay? We can intervene if we have to. Well, actually, why, why, hold on. Why is it like this? You have, uh, I don't like that. But they're in the Toronto Court, so I'm not going to complain. Meet with the unions, let's see what we can do. Special warfare projects, more chemicals, factories. Get more research speed, but, eh, that's kind of okay. Hopefully you don't have to send any more soldiers here. Successful union meetings. Okay, America, what are you doing? The Malgon pa- Aren't the Malgon papers supposed to happen really, really early on in the Thousand Week Reich? I'm pretty sure that's supposed to happen pretty early on. Are we at war with Italy? No, they're by themselves. They're independent. So, America, they're doing what America does best. So, I'm not even going to get bothered with that stuff. So, whatever. The Russian... Oh! The Russian Republic has capitulated to the Second Russian Republic. Good job, Russian Republic. Number two, the dual state. That goes Bosnia. Goodbye, Bosnia. Fortify Cyprus. Uh, what is the dual state? Dual administration zones. One nation, two systems. Huh. Okay, interesting. Regardless. So, we've done all this. So, let's talk about this. So, overall, there's more support at the time of this recording for us to recognize the Republic's claims. A united Indian subcontinent aligned with the interests of our commonwealth would be a formidable asset. We could recognize India's claims over the former, former territory of the Raj, which you guys recommended that we should do. And we have some... Uh, at this point, let's let technology go on. It doesn't really matter to me too much. We're pushing in 1960, and as you can tell from the title of this video, this is probably the last episode of this campaign, which has been interesting, a little weird, but not too bad. Palestine, the P word, and Israel, the I world. The I word. Confederal districts, huh? Confederal districts. Naval department, very nice. Early autoloaders, not bad. Let's make sure we get some better autoloaders. Or we'll do IFV stuff, which I never use. So, there we go. Very nice. Oh, actually, look at that. Turkey is actually in the Mediterranean Pact. I think I said, like, last time they weren't in there, so it's kind of cool to see them in there, actually. Not bad. It, oh, boy. So, if you like about the UK recognizing the Delhi government, please go right ahead. An interesting development with Ceylon for Commonwealth entry. We still maintain control over the island of Ceylon, which is claimed by India. Indian diplomats in London have strongly urged for its return, but we can play the situation to our advantage. By offering Ceylon in exchange for Indian entry into the Commonwealth, we can align them further. Not bad. Guys. Oh, it's just Bulgarians. No, it's not even the Americans here. It's just Bulgarians. It's the Americans telling the Bulgarians to do their dirty work, so. Go figure. And I know I didn't have to choose this one for the last part of the land doctrine, because there is a focus that we can do that gives a bonus to near switching land doctrine, but oh well, whatever. We're building more of this stuff up, which is probably okay, but I still want some more civvy goods. How about London, shall we? Kiefer Navy, Open Seas Doctrine. Uh, capital ships, probably more. Yeah, so already efficiency. That's really good to do. Ceylon, and then support Delhi. British Indian ties are now stronger than they have or have been, and our countries are now two giants of the Commonwealth. The government in Delhi can find a strong ally in us, and we can find the same in them. The Ceylon deal. When the British garage collapsed, Britain held onto its one territory in the region, the island of Ceylon. However, the situation is unsustainable. The ethnic groups on the island wrestle both rest, uh, both British authorities and each other for independence or change in leadership, with these disputes on often breaking out into violence. With the relations improving with the Indian Republic in Delhi, a chance for a deal has emerged. If India accepts, Ceylon will be transferred to the Republic. If Delhi ha might not have the best claim to the island, but it take the problem off our hands and onto theirs. In return, we can request India to join the Commonwealth, which will do good for our prestige as a still great power. Send the offer. Is anyone trying to rebel? Nope. The Empire? India refu refuses. Pacify these guys? Nope. So, despite initial interest, the Indian government has refused the Ceylon deal, citing the tensions on the island's security concerns. They recommended, or recommended Ceylon be prepared for independence, and the question of what to do with it will come up for us soon. What a shame. Yeah, I don't like that. Take it off our hands, regardless whether you like it or not. 
more early autoloaders. Cool. Very nice, very nice. Or independence for Ceylon. The island of Ceylon, the last British holding on to the Indian subcontinent, is rapidly becoming unsustainable territory. Discontent grows and threatens to boil over into rebellion. It is clear something must be done. And independence is the obvious solution. We this would not only take this would not only take this issue off our hands, but prevent the Indian Republic from expanding further. Create the nation of Sri Lanka. I have no option to do anything about that, do I? Well, I don't know about that. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. And some people really want me to do that way, but whatever. It is what it is. We have 100% compliance anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much, at least in my mind. So next, support Delhi. Well, we're running out of focus here. We did everything on the left side last time. Is that really it? Well, let's go through some more of these. So, mechanization focus. The future is one of mechanization. Powerful tanks that will sweep the land and wipe our enemies off the planet, which will be pretty good, as we'll probably watch America try to kill more people off. More troops. Okay. Well, we have the, con oh, the Communitarian Republic of India. Looking kind of nice. Did they just annex Hyderabad or something? That's weird that they're guaranteeing each other's independence. I'm not sure how I feel about that. But atomic research is done. Let's grab some gas masks, it looks like. Protective stance, very cool. Nice, less defender tactic damage and more tactics, or less tactics movement. Oh! There goes, Jesus, holy crud, guys. Okay, that's a little better, but wow, the Bulgarians don't like the Serbs. Never mind, they're here. America. Why? Trujillo overthrown, interesting. Words werble in this timeline. That guy, Werble. Well, the social... Wait, you're completely... In you're not a puppet? How are you not a puppet of anybody? Anything there? No? Generic focus tree, Montenegro? I swear to good... I swear to gosh. Like, this doesn't make any sense. You beat him up, but then you immediately release them. Why? <laughs> Why? Um, Bosnia has a claim on that. The Hungarians are still revolutionary Hungarians. Oh, they actually put down resistance. Not bad. Good, good job, guys. Um, other than that, I mean, we'll keep going through some of these focuses. We need you, though. I've already read, I think I read this yesterday, so if you'd like to read about this, please go right ahead. So, Lessons of Dunker would be kind of nice to do as well. So, we need you. And I'm not going to stop the game at all. We're just going to keep plowing on through as much and as fast as possible so we can get some of these focuses done as quickly, quickly, quickly. So that'll be nice. Unless there's an event we have to read, so. Help put down resistance where? Iran? Ceylon? Do Iran, maybe. We'll do this side of Iran. Cool. Uh, who's America fighting now? I forget. My mind just keeps slipping. Oh, yeah. No, no. Are you kidding me? Well, they can go straight from here. Or de Oh, yeah. They're, see, they're trying to naval invade. If I get involved, that means, uh, that means I have to take out their lands. I'll let America do that. That way we don't have to waste time with the peace conference. And... America. I know they're fascists or Nazis or whatever over there, but still. GDP, we are now fifth. Wow, we're actually... Oh, that makes sense. We're below the Russian Republic. Second Russian Republic. We're not that far behind, though. Actually, we're above France. The German Confederal Union has surpassed us. Well, that's not good. In the meantime, 100%. Nice. Keep building, 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 building. And we'll do some of that because we can. In addition, after we need you, we'll do improved Royal Armor Divisions. The Royal Armored Regiment has always been the service dedicated to operating tanks and armored vehicles. If we continue to expand this regiment, we'll see quick mechanization of our forces. Nice. Yeah, America's just... Jesus, guys, you're just chewing them up and making this really ugly. Meet with unions? We could try that again. Well, I'll do Royal well for Reform because we can. Let's do some of that. Uh, war propaganda against Americans? No, we're at 100%. We're doing good here. We're doing quite well. Yeah. We need you. So improve Royal Armor Divisions. I would like to see what else we have around here, too. Aerosols. Ooh, defend the skies. Nice. Good. Successful meetings are always good to have. Resistance growth speed. Let's go with nuclear reactors. Nice. Anything else here? We're currently doing well with this. Very, very awesome. And America's beating them up, which has the exact same color as Sweden. Wow. Hey, 99% stability, not bad. Anything else around here? Chemical research. Localized training centers. Psychological warfare would not be bad. Just keep building, 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 building. Wow, we have 45? 
I'll recruit in different places. Yeah, I, I don't ever care about that stuff. Oh, what's the Looney's gun? We'll see what happens now. And there goes Norway. See, I just let the Americans take it. Just let them take it. And they'll probably lose him as a puppet. Yep. The transitional authority of Norway, led by Keller Emmerich Rocky. Oh, look at that. I like that little puppet symbol. Not bad. Pretty good. Pretty good. There you go, just in case. All those different countries. After that, infantry support. Despite mechanization, it's still clear that a war cannot be won with machines alone. We will still require support from regular infantrymen in our advances. As well as finalized military doctrine, we have finished determining our military doctrine. It's time to look to the future now and hope that our new tactics pay off on the battlefield, followed up with lessons of Dunkirk. Since the failure of Dunkirk, we have learned. The mistakes of the past are only that mistakes. The prestige or prestige of the British Army must not be tainted by this, and a new force shall emerge stronger than ever before. The British Army. Hopefully. We got enough war support, enough stability. Let's go with some Wasteland Scouts, because we can. I don't really care about the penalty ahead of time, because it's only a month ahead. Not bad. And actually, did you know in Thousand Week Reich, you can store up to 15 days of political power from not doing a focus here? So, it's 15 instead of the usual 10, which I discovered the other day. So, alright, let's take a look at where America is going to attack next. And now we're still 5th. We're just barely behind the Russians and the Germans, so... We're really going to be gunning for lots and lots of more... GDP here. And putting up infrastructure so we can build stuff up more quickly. Mm, there'd be no point to change that. That'd be a really bad idea to go to partial mobilization too. There's really nothing here else for us to do too much, but I at least want to see the lessons of Dunkirk. Um, other than that, there's really not much here that's unique, really. Britannia rules away. This is kind of cool. Once again, the Navy is one of the envies of all the great powers in the world. Our waters are now in a pregnant fortress. Susceptible to new invading force, may the Royal Navy be a powerful tool we're in removing the Nazi menace from the face of Europe, Hail Britannia. And the bottom one of this one is protecting British skies. The Royal Air Force is now one of the most formidable military elements flying in the skies today. Never again may Britain have to fear the invasion of our airspace by foreign and aggressive forces. Hopefully not. We get more war support from that, which is not bad, but still. Infantry support. Man, that takes a while. Oof. Cool. We have 15. As long as we got three full lines working on civilian factories after this next one, I'll be okay with this one. Because I want at least 15, 15, 15, 1. So we can keep building, 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 building. Finalize military doctrine would be nice, because that's pretty much going to be the campaign then, I suppose. It's kind of a shorter episode, but it makes sense, since it's not a massive tree, and we're already in 1960. But happy 1960, everyone. Hope you're having a great year. Uh, after this one, we'll probably go with industry, yeah, construction, and then we'll go with concentrated stuff. Improving core industrial areas, huh? Oh, we have 90... Wait, what happened here? Uh, I don't want to hurt our construction speed with that. Agreement with the opposition, might as well. Don't want to hurt consumer goods either. So I think that's probably it. We can recruit someone from Ireland, I guess. I guess that makes sense in once we have to fight the... Oh, wow, what happened to our manpower? Oh, we got that 1% more population. Man, we mobilized fast. Recruitment campaign, nice. So we've got 15 days left. We have way too many days there. Not bad, not bad. We've got tons of naval XP. Look at that. Combined blitz. At least we finished our land doctrine, which is pretty nice. And then we'll go with concentrated industry, probably for more factories and infrastructure. Max factories in the state. Or, no, this one's better, actually, right now. We get to produce factories more quickly for infrastructure, as and that one, too. And max factories, not bad. Not bad. Yeah, I, I, we see the entire, like, tree here, but still, like... Or is this... A thousand week rack really going to go all the way up to... 1990s? Like, that's insane. And we shall finish with the Lessons of Dunkirk, which I've already read. And 70 day focus. Wow, that is... That's a long time. Oh, we could demobilize a little bit more, I suppose. That wouldn't be bad. It doesn't really hurt us, though, if we do that. It doesn't hurt us, though. Let's see. Social democracy support. Labor Party only 29% under Hugh Gates scale. And we have a socialist about the same amount from James Maxson. Coup d'etat in Cuba. Oh, boy. Imperial instability, which... I don't know if we can ever get rid of that at the, at the time of this recording. Westland Scout... Let's get some more research speed, even though we don't really need it. Uh, Republic of Cuba, do you have a uh, revolution? Pretend autocrats under Fulgencio Bast Batistas. Alright, cool. Oh, crap. No, no, no. We're not doing winds of change. Are you kidding me? No, 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 no. no. Not Kenya, not Zanzibar. No, 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 no. I have about 35 days left, which isn't too bad. 35 days left, and that means... With this, we can still do the last focus without giving people independence, because they don't deserve it, right? Right. Cool. 
Some injuries. Uh, some approval. Chemical protections. What else do we have down here? So it could either go lethal chemicals, resistance target, or resistance, resistance growth speed. Speed. Non-lethal chemicals, combat tear gas. I like that. Chemical shells. I like that a lot. Military chemical science versus chemical bombs. Um, I like the trickle back. Research efficiency gain is more synthetic oil. Not bad. So let's go with lethal chemicals. Because <laughs> we can. <laughs> uh, Britain trying to get more chemical weapons. I love it. Yeah, you know, this part. I, I want to explore more of this part sometime. Research speed, improved biological agents. Where does COVID come in here? Combat enhancing drugs. So, the lessons of Dunkirk, and this is what I wanted to read. For generations, the word Dunkirk has filled British society with fear and shame. Memories and images of those few lucky men to escape home, broken and traumatized by defeat, while hundreds of thousands of their comrades remain imprisoned by the Nazis, is forever an etched in the consciousness of those that left or remember the War of 1940. Yet, with every mistake, even one as great as Dunkirk comes an opportunity to learn and improve. After years on the back foot, cowering behind the channel and dreading the day Hitler reemerged, or reneged on the 1948 armistice. Britain has regained its footing in military prowess and is ready to yet again go on the offensive. The lessons have been learned, uh, lessons of the military disaster and other experiences of modern warfare have been learned and learned well. Innovation and investment has transformed the British armed forces into a fighting force far more fit for the modern age than it ever was. And, and now, British military planners are much more confident in the ability of their resources. Britain may not be the superpower it once was, but the British people are sure as heck willing and, and able to fight as if still it is. As if it still is. Britain is back. Cool. And that's going to be it for the campaign. Because honestly, there's not really much else. And I'm not going to give independence to Africans. Don't quote me on that. But regardless, if you joined the campaign, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. Because we're pretty much all done here. There's nothing else we can really do. And I will see you all in a different campaign eventually. Again. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.